Hi and welcome to Module 1 Fields and Interaction. So in this presentation we're going to look at how we can understand the process of induction. We'll look at the properties of the human matrix. We'll be exploring biomagnetic fields and their interaction. We'll be looking at the frequency of the biomagnetic fields and how that links with healing and we're going to be going into more detail about the biomagnetic fields in the hands. So first of all let's explore understanding induction. Electricity and magnetism are connected. Now here's an accident that happened to Hans Christian Orsted. He found out by accident that if you pass an electrical current through a wire it caused a nearby compass needle to rotate. He discovered that electricity can give rise to magnetism and this has become a basic law of physics called Ampere's Law. In 1831 Michael Faraday made another discovery. He found that it works the other way round. So if you move a magnet near a conductor like a wire or indeed the human body this will induce a measurable current, an electrical current in the wire. In other words magnetism gives rise to electricity. This is Faraday's law of induction and it's another basic law of electromagnetism. So we've got these two laws of physics Ampere's law which is if we pass a current along a wire or a conductor it gives rise to magnetism. In other words an electromagnetic field is created around the wire. And Faraday's law of induction says the opposite. In other words if we move a magnet near a wire then the magnetic field will give rise to electricity. Now we see these two laws of physics applied all around us in the world because this property is the basis of all transmission and receiving. So for example in radios, TV and mobile phones we experience this transmission of electromagnetic energy and the receiving of that electromagnetic energy as a way of communication. In the human body electromagnetic fields have been found medically to promote bone healing and other healing in different tissues. So in this case what we're doing is we are transmitting a biomagnetic field from our hands which is inducing a current in bone or another tissue at a frequency that's been shown to promote bone healing. We'll come back to this a bit later in the presentation. So now let's think about the human matrix. The human matrix is a liquid crystal connected system. So what does that mean? Well it means that the cells are connected together. The old idea of the cell being a bag or an isolated entity in the body has been changed by recent research and discovery to being part of a connective tissue system. Collagen fibres connect all the cells of the body through a webwork of connection, the human matrix and this creates a continuously connected system that information can flow through. The connective tissue is made up of liquid crystals. All the major constituents of living organisms are made of liquid crystals. Liquid crystals are a mesostate, they're halfway between a solid and a liquid and they allow information flow around the human matrix. Interestingly for us as shiatsu practitioners, liquid crystals in the body are very sensitive to mechanical pressure from our thumbs and electromagnetic or biomagnetic fields from our hands. 
So now let's look a little bit more closely at biomagnetic fields. Biomagnetic fields are just electromagnetic fields created by biological systems. Biomagnetic fields are created by the human body. The heart, brain, muscles and eyes all create different parts of the biomagnetic field. Current measurements allow us to detect the biomagnetic field of the human body five meters away from the human body, but the fields are very low intensity, they're very weak and they're also very low frequency. We'll come back to that later in the presentation. Okay, so what about field interactions? Well, even though biomagnetic fields are very low intensity, the human matrix is highly sensitive to magnetic fields, but not just any magnetic fields. The human matrix is sensitive to low intensity fields of a specific frequency. And that may form a mechanism for information interaction between two people's fields. Here's some recent research and it was only on the 18th of March 2019, there was a surprise discovery that humans can detect the Earth's geomagnetic field. The Earth's geomagnetic field is another very weak field. It is a static field though, it's not moving like the magnet that moved past the wire in the laws of physics presentation earlier in this presentation. It's a static field, so electromagnetic induction is not involved. That's led scientists to believe that there may be ferromagnetic elements in cells that are able to detect magnetic fields. Here's a diagram of the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum is made up of different frequencies of electromagnetic energy. The scale at the top gives the length of the wavelength of the wave and the frequency waves per second gives us how frequently per second the waves vibrate. You'll see that starting from the right ionizing, that's dangerous radiation like gamma rays and x-rays, are extremely high frequency. As we go down into the lower frequencies, about the size of a bacteria or virus in terms of wavelength, you'll notice that we, there's a small band of visible light. Above the visible light is ultraviolet and below is infrared. As we go further down the frequency we get into the microwave radiation where we find radar, microwave ovens and then as we get into the lower frequency range we get into the frequency range of radio waves. Okay, so the electromagnetic spectrum is a very very wide spectrum of different wavelengths and frequencies. So let's explore where the biomagnetic field lies in this spectrum. Now don't be frightened by this diagram. We'll just have a quick look and see what information we can get from this diagram. This diagram shows whereabouts biomagnetic signals are in terms of frequency and also in terms of their intensity. You'll notice that the biomagnetic signals or the biomagnetic waves from the human being are created by the heart, the muscles, the brain and the eye. And you can see them in the MOG, MCG, MMG and MEG sections of this diagram. You'll notice that the magnetic flux density of the Earth 
is quite a lot stronger if you look at the top of the left hand axis it says magnetic flux density so we're looking at very weak signals here so now let's look at the frequency if you look down at the frequency you'll notice that the MCG which is the magnetocardiogram that's the heart pulse of the biomagnetic signal is around 60 to 70 Hertz now that makes sense because that's the heart rate that's the frequency of the heart rate so as the heart pumps it creates an electrical current in the heart which then goes through the muscles and through the human matrix and that goes out just like those early experiments as an electromagnetic wave so let's place this frequency range on the previous diagram and see where we are okay if you look at the frequency on the bottom left hand chart you'll see that it follows on from the frequency of the radio waves of the electromagnetic spectrum so the electromagnetic spectrum low frequency radio waves go down to about 10 to the 6 waves per second now if we go down further we get down to 10 to the naught between 10 to the naught and 10 to the 1 which basically means between 10 and 100 so you can see how the frequency of the heart is around 60 to 70 beats a minute but you can also see that these are very low frequency waves they're lower frequency than even the lowest frequency of radio waves so let's think a little bit more about research about frequency and healing about the pulsating biomagnetic field in your hands well here's some interesting research Sato in 1992 managed to detect 10 to the minus 3 gauss biomagnetic field strength well what does that mean basically it means a very strong field in the hands of people who were doing key work like Qigong or of course us in the shiatsu profession he found that people who developed their key field had a field in their hands a thousand times stronger than the normal biomagnetic field now if we link that with some other research by Zimmerman in 1990 we have some very interesting correlations because he discovered that the biomagnetic field between the hands is not a single frequency it actually sweeps through a sequence of frequencies so if you heard it as a sound it would be like and <laughs> each of those frequencies that the biomagnetic field between our hands sweeps through relates to healing of different structures in the body that have been shown and some of these frequencies are used medically to create instruments that create electromagnetic fields to accelerate bone growth and other tissues so that was a fascinating discovery and it indicates that we may all have an ability to heal different types of tissue uh, from the key or the biomagnetic field from our hands now by the biomagnetic field is not the only type of energy that we have between our hands we also have infrared radiation which is radiant heat it's another part of the electromagnetic spectrum and that's what gives the feeling of warmth in our hands when we pass our hands over the body of a receiver there are also some light uh, biophotons in other words light that's transmitted from living systems which we'll explore later on in this course uh, when we look at quantum effects in living systems and also there's a certain amount of sound uh, created by our blood circulation so we have a lot of different types of energy coming from our hands that we can use 
when we do our shiatsu. OK, so let's review. OK, electricity and magnetism are connected through the process of induction. If you place a biomagnetic field across your body tissue, your human matrix, it will induce a current in that tissue. The human matrix is made up of liquid crystals. They connect the whole of the body together and that human matrix is highly sensitive to biomagnetic fields and also to pressure. Biomagnetic fields are just electromagnetic fields that have been created by the biology of a living system. And those frequencies of the biomagnetic fields in our hands have been shown to resonate with living tissue and enhance the healing process. Okay, and the biomagnetic field in the hands is just one part of a wider range of other features such as radiant heat, light and sound. Okay, I hope you found this presentation interesting. So now we can go on to the video tutorials and we've got two video tutorials for you. One is exploring the biomagnetic field of your hands and scanning the field of your receiver's channels. And we've got a second video tutorial where Basti experiments with a synesthetic exercise converting the biomagnetic field tissue resonance into sounds so that he can focus his work. Thank you.